This is a short video showing how we repaired a keel to a Capri 25 that was grounded and had some damage in it. The boat is owned by Jacomo Sailing Club and sailed at Lake Jacomo in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, the Capri 25 is a 25-foot sailboat, uh, fin keel with uh, lead on the inside. We knew it was grounded during the season, but we didn't know the extent of the damage, and we hauled it in the fall, and you can see where the keel's torn up. It was torn up on both sides, front and back. So the, in order to make a 3D mold, I needed to first draw the profile of the keel to make the plug to go inside the mold. And so I made marks along it every inch and then measured the thickness with a caliper and made a plot file for that uh, with that those dimensions and then drew those in AutoCAD. And it took several tries to get it to actually fit. I would draw it up and then plot it full scale and cut it out of poster board and then see how it fit. It took several iterations to get it right. And then this was the final da data set here uh, that generated this profile and that fit the best. Um, it didn't fit perfectly because the keel isn't fared. So then I took that over into a software program called SketchUp and took a picture of it straight on from the side and brought that into scale and then straight up from the broad bottom and brought that into scale and laid the two on top of each other. So with that information and the profile, I was able to draw the keel. 3D printing this part isn't all that complicated. There's a lot of people that do 3D printing now and you can probably find someone on Craigslist or through word of mouth and those uh, individuals probably can also draw the do the drawing also. It's kind of a common skill set. So here's the the mold of the keel itself. I added a radius on the front and the back to it and then to make the actual pattern or the mold, I enlarged it to make about a quarter of an inch around the perimeter and the top and bottom. I didn't need to mold the entire part, so I split it in the middle and took out the piece that I didn't need the mold for. And then I also added flanges to it so it could be split the other way to help it come off easier after the epoxy had set. So after I had the uh, the, the pattern drawn, then I split it in half and made the two halves, and those parts went to the 3D printer. Before I started on it, I read up a little bit on the repair of it. Uh, West System has an excellent manual that has, it's 156 pages and it covers about everything. And so I went to the part on keel repair and read what it recommended. And one of the recommendations was to try to find any soft spots behind the keel, which I did find by tapping on it as they uh, advised. And then I drilled holes into those soft spots and injected it with uh, a filled resin. Um, the resin I used, I filled all of it with the high strength filler. Uh, it's cabosil or silica fume. And then also they recommend when you're uh, epoxying to lead that uh, the f lead can oxidize very quickly. And so they recommended wetting it out with epoxy, just uh, non-filled epoxy, and then wire brushing it vigorously to uh, work it into the lead itself. And I used a brass wire brush so I wouldn't have any uh, any chance of any steel in it. So there's a lot of good recommendations in this manual. So here it is with a dress down a little bit. I removed all the loose material, wire brushed in the epoxy, 
and then added some sheet metal screws, some stainless sheet metal screws, to give something for the plug to grip onto. I did that on both sides, front and back. And here's the 3D printed mold. It was split lengthwise, then I bolted the two halves together. The, uh, of course, it has to come off after the epoxy sets, so I tried different types of mold releases. I tried this stoner urethane mold release, Vaseline, and then I also tried a couple coats of uh, automotive car wax. And actually, all three of them worked pretty well. The Vaseline worked the best, so I used it. So after bolting the halves together, I used a small brush and coated those with Vaseline and then bolted them onto the boat and uh, supported it from the bottom. I squeezed them together a little bit to make it fit. And then I sealed this edge with just bathroom caulk because I wanted the epoxy not to run out the sides or the bottom, but out the top, so it completely filled it. Here you can see one of the holes where I injected to fill a hollow behind the the uh, uh, cover of the, over the lead. So I drilled two little holes in the um, molds and injected that with uh, uh, epoxy resin filled with the cabosil or the silica fume. And I made it to about a mayonnaise consistency. I wanted to be able to get it out the nozzle of the uh, syringe so I didn't make it too thick. And here's what it looked like after we stripped it. Now you can see it was all it filled very nicely. Here's the other side. And it didn't take much dressing down uh, to get it to fit the profile. And then I used a 404 uh, fairing compound filled epoxy to just clean it up and to make it nice and smooth. Uh, here's some of the other holes where I filled voids on this side. I probably should have had a barrier coat over it, but I didn't have any of the Interlux products, so it didn't get any. So that's the final product before uh, adding the uh, anti-fouling paint. And here's over the top with anti-fouling paint, and, and you can't notice that there's been any repair to it at all. So it turned out very nicely.